Coming up next, New York's finest playground. New York, they say, never sleeps. I'm sure it's largely true because there's so much to do. And when the sun goes down, most New Yorkers are preparing to go out and party. There are a myriad number of clubs and bars down there. But this one, behind a crumbling facade on East 14th Street, has lately become the nightlife epicentre. Five nights a week, all sorts of disparate elements come together to make sparks. Even the management says the club is geographically situated so that uptown chic gets to meet downtown sleaze. Most nights, the music goes until 4 a.m. Inside the cavernous building is a mixture of high-tech style and decay. The 60-year-old Baroque shell of the one-time Academy of Music has been kept and superimposed over it is a very modern, bold latticework that conceals something like 10,000 light bulbs and synapse jangling speakers that can be driven at up to 28,000 watts. That assault on the sensors is orchestrated by banks of video mixing panels, lighting synthesizers and other hardware that cost the club owners close to $2 million. For the uninitiated, the Palladium, as it's known, could be called a sort of fifth generation discotheque. But Tom DeMeo, who drives the computerised lighting system, doesn't like to label the place that way. It's not fair to call this just a discotheque because it really isn't. It's, yeah, we do so many other things here besides that. Our private parties, we've shot the MTV Awards, movie premieres, we shot Stevie Wonder's video here. Uh, we're doing another video Monday with Raquel Welsh. Uh, we did Paul Newman's Color Money Party, so we do industrials. Uh, just a myriad, myriad of things, plus our many fashion shows and other events that we do here. So it's taken it another step further. This equipment that we have here is all theatrical and rock and roll equipment. It's the first time it's ever been utilized in this type of dancing environment. There is not a piece of disco equipment except one mirror ball. New York's uh, social glitterati come here in their thousands. Some to gain access and some to be turned away. Why? Because most nights the atmosphere and the people that they meet here can be quite electric. As you uh, walk up this grand and uh, stylish staircase, you're propelled upwards into eddies of conversation in the quieter rear of the grand old theatre, or you're sucked into a frenzied 100 decibel whirlpool of rock, reggae and funk fusion at one of the best light and sound shows in the world. By 10.30, things are definitely getting underway. Tima here is a VJ. That's club speak for a video jockey. She's already read the audience and selected the type of images that might titillate and amuse. Then she begins to fly down the central focus of the show. Two gigantic video monitors, each weighing four and a half tons. They're hydraulically actuated with air brakes hissing. But you can't hear that over the noise. Uh, music. Now they can be used like two movie screens with single images on them, or via this mixing panel here they can get uh, something like 25 segmented images going. And when you put all of the images together and the, the power of the sound and lighting system, the effect is really quite mesmeric. Down the hallway, Tom DeMeo is fingering his very light console like a concert pianist, trying to interpret the mood of the music and add a certain something of his own. The very light computerised light array cuts through the room like lasers. Down on the dance floor, it's like a scene out of Close Encounters. The very lights have 90 colours in each, 
eight different beam sizes, and they can be pre-programmed to remember 239 scene movements. There's three light shows that goes on. You have the bottom floor of people dancing. That whole hoop the ah just as long as they're happy and going. Then you have a second balcony, which are watching the people downstairs. They're more in tune to watching the light show itself. They're more looking around and watching the energy and people. Then there's also the people that are in the building, but not uh, really involved in that. And what you really try to do is you try to unite the audience from your first move to getting them all as one, taking the same breath. The Palladium is an interesting benchmark in this form of mass escapism. You can't help wondering how future discos and clubs will evolve when you consider that in a few years' time, this club will no longer be hip or now, and there'll be somewhere new to replace it. Perhaps eventually you'll be able to dance alongside a holographic image of your favourite rock star. Somehow I can't really see dancing going out of style. Even I finally succumb to the beat of the tom toms But as for the dance styles of the future, well, they'll almost certainly be semi-lascivious and semi-ridiculous, just as they are now.